I'm Emma Louise Coffey and you're welcome to The Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. With recent storm and snow conditions, getting out to grass has become a challenge on farms. Grass experts Michal O'Leary and Fergus Bogue join us with some simple tips on how to maintain grazed grass in the diet of dairy cows. If we look at covers coming in from pasture-based opening covers, um, the growth rate is coming in somewhere around three, four, five kilos, um, which would be, your, I suppose, your typical um, overwinter growth um, down with the past couple of years. In terms of the three to five kilos, was there a variation geographically or was it similar across the board? Um, it was fairly similar across the board, I suppose. Um, the main thing was that, that farmers that maybe got five or six or maybe even seven kilos of, of dry matter, um, they would have closed with, with a higher cover or a cover of about 800 kilos um, come the 1st of December. So when they did their opening cover um, in mid, mid December or mid January, um, they were they were opening up at a higher cover than than the guys who who skint their farm and and close up at a closing cover of four or five hundred. And talk through the opening cover. Um, you mentioned opening cover, and if we consider the target for just say we have three cows per hectare on our milking platform, and um, we're calving maybe eighty percent of our cows within six weeks, so we have a high demand. What sort of opening cover would those farms have wanted on the first of February? Um, generally, M. Louise, you you really want to be opening with nine hundred kilos of dry matter per hectare plus eighty percent of a six week in calf rate. Um, you're going to have a huge demand. Um, four or five weeks, six weeks into the the grazing season or into the calving season, um, your your demand is going to be somewhere between thirty five and forty. Um, so I suppose there, there you definitely need to have. Uh, 900 kilos of dry matter per hectare on your farm on the 1st of February. Um, and that's probably including supplement somewhere around 3 kilos ahead uh, for the first rotation as well. So definitely a, a minimum of 900 kilos of dry matter. And talking through that 900 kilos, how does this compare with what you're seeing on farms? Yeah, so I, I suppose we just ran a report there this morning over the last seven days and I suppose the average farm cover has come back at um, 830. So I suppose... Out of, out of the farmers that have put in the cover over the seven days, about 60% are below um, the mark of the 900 kilos of dry matter. So I suppose it, it probably is a bit of a worry maybe that um, the covers are maybe on, a bit on the low side. Um, farmers can catch up maybe that to, to go out with fertilizer, go out with slurry. Um, in, in order to boost growth and, and to get, get on target quickly. And, and given that we've had a cold spell in January and, and again in the last week or so, you know we talk about with cold weather sometimes grass disappears. Is that evident on farms? Um, I don't think it is. Um, a lot of farmers kind of would say that, that covers go back, but it's probably actually the dry matter of the grass is changing and, and they're probably not. When they are doing a cut and weigh, for example, they're not adjusting for the difference in dry matter. If we do get cold weather, um, if you do get frost, grass tends to dry out. Um, but I think it is definitely um, maybe adjust the dry matter, um, do the back calculation when paddocks, when cows have grazed paddocks um, in order to calibrate yourself. But generally, um, you would really want to get extremely bad weather for at least over a week to see grass, grass dying back. And then in terms of our spring rotation planner, this is the... I suppose grazing tool we're using at this time of year to manage grass, to, to utilise it as best as possible and maintain grass in the diet. Um, what sort of numbers are you seeing in terms of spring rotation planners completed on Pasture Base Ireland? Um, so over the last couple of years, I suppose, um, we have in or, in or over around 12 or 1300 um, spring rotation planners have been completed. Um, it's a very useful tool for this time of the year. All you need is, is this, the date that you start uh, grazing, the date that you finish grazing and the area of your farm. So it's, it's just kind of giving you a bit of a roadmap as regards the first, um, first rotation. Um, what area do you, ne- do you need to graze per week? What area um, do you need to graze per day? Um, and I suppose it maps out the farm in uh, time over area. We're here now in mid-February. Is it too late to complete a spring rotation planner or is there still time? Oh, definitely. Um, it definitely, it w- would be well worth their while for every farmer to um, to do a spring rotation planner. Um, it's available on pasture base. And at the end of the week, we are um, releasing a new um, app, our new release of the app, the, um, the PBI Grass app. And the spring rotation planner will be included in that. 
And and to you, Fergus, um, can you talk us through the grazing season to date? So, you know, at the, the start of February, weather seemed quite well, quite good, a bit more challenging in the last few days. Yeah, so Emma Louise, um, we got off to really a, a great start in terms of grazing there in late January, early February. The first week of February was was a great um, week for grazing there. And I suppose there's four key elements to early grazing on farms. And um, particularly in the grass courses, there's four key focuses for us. So with, with early grazing, um, we reduce costs on farms for the farmers. So there's less silage and meal going in. And grass is the cheapest source of feed for these farmers um, and for their cows to be grazing there. We can increase milk solids on farms, so it's again increasing the profitability on farms. We're reducing workload for farmers and we're reducing the greenhouse gas emissions. So it was great to get um, cows out in late January and early February. Um, I suppose the storm put a bit of a halt um, put a bit of a halt to grazing after that. So in, in every spring we're going to have some difficult periods there. So it put a, a halt on many farms. Um, some farmers battled away. Um, and got cows out for a few hours during the, during the day, um, cows out with an edge, and I suppose that saved a dry paddock for, for this kind of weather there. Um, I suppose with good infrastructure and access on farms there, um, they got in and out for a few hours in the storm, but it did put a halt to grazing on many farms. But but I suppose cow, farmers know that, that cows go out day and night again to to hit the 30% in February and go hard at grass to get grass coming back for the second round there. So you mentioned the grazing infrastructure, Fergus, and, and we've talked about this in the past, but I suppose, can you refresh our memory? What are the the grazing stru- uh, infrastructure tools that farmers can use? And just talk through how they'll practically achieve that on the farm in the coming days. Well, I suppose... Um, it's, it's grazing the right paddock for the right day. And in early February, before the infrastructure, the cover has to be right on the paddock there. So farmers um, turn initially turn, turn out their cows and covers from 700 to 1,000. And I suppose there's two reasons for this. is is to get cows used to grazing again because they're after eating silage for the whole winter. And it's to get area grazed, to have grass coming back for the second round so that it's at your cover of twelve to 1,400 in early April again. In terms of infrastructure, you're looking at um, multiple access points into paddocks there. So um, particularly in wet weather, you want pad- um, cows entering a paddock in one entry uh, point and exiting the pa- paddock at another exit point there so that we're not damaging the gaps too much. You need good roadways, of course, there. Um, some farmers graze um, a paddock from two sides if there's a roadway going going across the paddock from two different angles there. Um just in terms of the infrastructure as well, um, we're strip grazing with a back fence this time of the year. So so we need multiple access points, particularly with small numbers calved on farms in early February, to be able to strip graze and back fence and get cows in and out of paddocks without any damage there. So I think you've made some really good points there. And, you know, we talk about roadways. That's maybe something that if they're not uh, top notch at the moment, that's not going to change. But your simple tip, get the cows in one entrance into the paddock and out a different exit point. And and the strip, I suppose, using your strip wire um, as effectively as possible. So giving them a strip and, and you know, um, maybe the one cow channel roadway as well um, into the paddock. And and the, the back fence is critical this time of year for two reasons it it allows um grass to recover and regrow for the second round and you're not traveling over any grazed area so you're minimizing the damage and letting it recover in that that element there too a a lot of farmers are practicing on off grazing so the cows are out for a really short period of time you know relative to the the full day so they're out for maybe two three hours in the morning two three hours in the evening uh silage is going into diets um at the moment um how would you um, implement silage feeding to maintain a keen appetite once cows go to grass, Fergus? Yeah, well, so some farmers practice this in the storm there and and the key for on-off grazing is to get cows out with an edge so that they're grazed, they put their heads down and, and once they're finished grazing, we pull them off um, before they do any damage. So there's three things you're trying to achieve daily. You're trying to feed the cow, you're trying to minimise damage and you're trying to hit your residuals as close as possible in in this wet in these weather periods. Um, so the key thing for on-off grazing is probably that if you're feeding silage by night, 
night that it's ran out by the next morning. If you put too much silage in front of your cows for the night and the silage in front of them for the following morning, they won't have an appetite to graze that day. So it's about leaving them out with an edge and in order for this to happen, the silage has to have ran out by morning time there. And just, I suppose, to, to um, you know, to sum up in terms of, you've identified four key areas that farmers are going to benefit where the cows are out of grass and you talk about, you know, reducing costs, increasing uh, milsaz production and then you've also alluded to workload and um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Um, I suppose, you know, following on from, we had a conversation with Stephen Butler here last week and, he, you know, he really um, made reference to the, I suppose, the advantage for, uh, the animals are getting in terms of their energy intake where they are at grass and that has a huge knock-on effect in terms of their health and reproduction um, going forward um, ahead of the breeding season. I guess finally, um, to you Michal, we're at the you know, early stage of our grazing season now. And, you know, farmers are engaging with grass measuring. Can you recommend how many grass measurements we should target on farm to get a full picture of our overall grass production for the year? Yeah, so it's often a question I suppose we do get asked in Louise. Um, roughly you would want somewhere over 25, 30 measurements a year. Um, but I think for, for a farmer starting off that they just need to break up the year maybe into three different three different areas that if they would aim to get maybe four or five done um, by the 10th of April and um, then try to, try to do a weekly cover then until September and then probably do one every two weeks after that, do your closing cover on the 1st of December. Um, I think it's critical for, for any farmer starting off that the first thing that they do is an opening cover to see where does the farm lie um, today. Um, do a spring rotation planner. Um, as Fergus alluded to, I get the cows out grazing. And I suppose one important point as well, I suppose, is, is fertilizer and getting fertilizer um, out onto paddocks. Um, from just talking to some of the co-ops, uh, fertilizer sales have been a bit sluggish this year. Um, but it, it, it's vitally important to get... I suppose nitrogen out um, through protected urea, um, probably 23 units probably uh, at this time of the year for the, for the first application um, and to, to kickstart growth and to kickstart the plant um, growing again for, for the coming year. And I guess just to sum up, um, it's good to get a picture of how much grass is on farms across the country. Important that we focus now on getting cows out and also getting fertiliser out to ensure we have grass coming for the second rotation. I guess with the weather conditions over the last week or so, we must acknowledge that, you know, farmers are working hard and it comes back to something that John Marr would always talk about. In the spring, we need to be flexible and, you know, look at all of the technologies and the tools we have to get grass in the diet and get the farm grazed off in the, the first two months of the grazing season. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Emily Louise. Thanks, Emily Louise. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Michal O'Leary and Fergus Bogue for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join me next time for your Dairy Edge. <laughs>